Hi, in this video today, we're going to be talking about what type of visual field do you want to have if you've had a stroke and lost vision, or maybe a traumatic brain injury, maybe even glaucoma. Before we do that, let's talk about how you can connect with us. If you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, that's okay. Go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. All right, so now let's go back into our talk today about different visual fields. You can kind of see that I have a spread of visual fields on my desk today. I'm going to start with the one that is not as helpful. There's even one I didn't print off to show you today just because every time that comes across my desk, I'm like, I don't want that visual field. Give me a different one. <laughs> so we'll talk about that one though too. So this is one visual field that, let's see if we have a name for this one. I don't even know if I have the name on this particular test uh, to tell you, but let's just take a moment to pause and take a look at it. This is not a very helpful visual field. There are several key factors that are missing. So yes, we do have this, what we would call like lovely gray scale which is great, that's important, but it's missing a lot of detail because this is all that I get. In contrast, I do want to share with you the type of visual field that's most helpful. And that would be this one right here. You can definitely see there's a, if we go like this, there is a large difference between this visual field here and this one over here. With this one, which is called the 30-2 threshold visual field, you get this lovely gray scale. You get this um, number scale here that tells us how sensitive you are. So the amount of sensitivity to the object that was being flashed to you. And then you have these pattern and total deviations down at the bottom, which I don't always really look at those carefully. Uh, I do in certain circumstances, but these are really the most two important things. That if someone is ha has had a visual field loss from a stroke or traumatic brain injury, and your doctor's following to see how things are changing, especially within the first six months, these are the most important. You really cannot follow accurately with this visual field. So if that's what your doctor's going off of, that's not real accurate. Um, there is another one, which again, I mentioned just a little bit ago that I didn't even print off. And it basically is just a dot scale. So all you see is just dots. Sometimes they will do that binocular. That's not helpful at all because you want to see what happens between the two eyes. So if it's just a little dot scale and all you see are just random dots, like here's black dots, here's clear dots. That means you can see it. Black means you can't. That particular test is not at all beneficial and you really can't gather much data from it. But this 30 dash two, you can. Now there's another test that is similar to this that I want to show you that can also be helpful, but it just doesn't go out as broad. It's called a 24 dash two. Well, as you can imagine, it doesn't give, it's a little bit more of a centralized um, threshold and so uh, it gives a little bit more close in data so it's not quite going out as far as the 30-2 but you can see that there's similarities with the other one that I showed you. You have your gray scale here and then you have your scale over here that tells you the level of sensitivity. So what's important is to be able to look at this side and say okay well, where it's really black on the grayscale, there should be a corresponding zero because there's no sensitivity. Even the brightest object that was flashed to the person, they couldn't see it. So then if you look over and you say, well, like here's a little gray fuzzy spot, sort of. Let's look what that looks like. Oh, that number is a 15. So this test is going to give you valuable data, just like the 30-2, although the preference is going to still be the 30-2 because a little bit broader, wider view out than what you're seeing with the 24-2. Now, one other test that is somewhat similar that I have seen from patients who've brought to me um, just randomly, we see is this one right here. And this particular test, I don't know that I have the name of it. It's just based on the actual machine that is utilized 
for the test. But as you can see, it has a grayscale. Looks a little different though. And then over here, it has that number scale, which is real important. Over here, instead of a zero where it's all black, it will just say no. Nothing was visible, they couldn't see anything. But then you get your numbers associated with clear and normal vision of 25, 26, 27, 28. And then over on the side where there's little pops of maybe some vision in there, you'll have some corresponding like, okay, maybe they see that at like 11 or seven. So these are some of the visual fields. Again, the least of all is this one. And then right behind that would be that dot one. That's just kind of almost worthless completely. So these two types, this one and the dot one is not really what you want to have if you've had a, any kind of vision loss, like traumatic brain injury, again, stroke, maybe glaucoma, um, possibly even like optic atrophy or something like that. Your best bet is to go with the 30-2, that's most preferable. And then secondary, this is another one that sometimes is used just depending on what machine does the testing. And if you really kind of can't have that 30-2, then a 24-2 is not a bad one to have. What you want to make sure that you do have though, as you're doing these visual field tests, is they have to be repeatable. So if you're doing a 30-2 the first time, you don't want to do a 24-2 the next time. You don't want to change up the type of test. You also want to look at the information at the top of the test. And the information at the top is going to give you a lot of data, but basically what will happen is it will give you things like fixation monitor, was it turned on or turned off? Um, was the fovea turned on or turned off? How many fixation losses were there? False positive, false negatives. And then you'll look at things like the RX, which is like the prescription that they put in the machine for you to be able to see. Um, other things in there will just be, like there's some other data that's in there. And so if you have um, all of that data at the top of the visual field, plus the corresponding correct visual field, that's something that is repeatable every time you want it to repeat it exactly the same way. Now, if the person is really having a tough time initially, a lot of times they'll turn the fovea off. But unfortunately, that also means that what will happen is, is that um, if the fovea is monitoring is turned off, then they may look around a little bit and the test may have some inaccuracies with it. But sometimes what we will do is as they get more accurate and we're seeing changes, so for instance, this one actually is a change. If we look at the left eye from before, this patient had gained visual field. So this was, oh, sorry, wrong eye. This was the initial left eye over here on this side. And then this was the new one as we were starting to see changes. Sometimes as the patient's progressing and getting more vision, what we'll do is we'll say, well, we might want to turn the fovea on so we know that there's definitely very good accuracy to this test. So only if the person's getting much better over time do we want to see that. But anyway, I hope this is really helpful. Many times I get questions about, well, what type of visual field should I have? You know, if the person's had a stroke, um, doctors contact our office about that to find out like what's the most repeatable one that they want to be measuring and we'll talk to them about that frequently. So if you'd like to find out more about how we treat and help our patients who have lost vision, whether it be from traumatic brain injury, stroke, or some other cause that's caused maybe like a homonymous pneumonopsia, quadrinopsia, or if it's glaucoma and they're just having like an arcuate round defect that kind of swirls in over time, then you can go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. We have an entire page that's dedicated to talking about stroke and vision recovery. Super important, tons of details on there as well as some success stories, which are awesome to read. And um, if you're local, you can call us at 618-288-1489. Thank you. And just as a reminder, if you haven't done so already, make sure you like and subscribe and then pass this video on to someone if you feel like it could benefit them. Thank you.